Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of the literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for the 25th in a 274-part series as we journey poem by poem through Sylvia Plath's big yellow book, The Collected Poems of Sylvia Plath. This video will appear in two separate playlists, not only the Sylvia Plath playlist, but also the Poetry Discussion playlist, which we are cruising ever closer to 350 videos strong, and I hope to get that to 500 by the turn of of 2025. Uh, my, my goal, in other words, for 2024 is around 150 poetry discussions, three per week. So we will uh, hopefully get there. This poem from Sylvia Plath known as Recantation, uh, and it reads as such. Tea leaves I've given up, and that crooked line on the queen's palm is no more my concern. On my black pilgrimage, this moon-pocked crystal ball will break before it help, rather than croak out what's to come, my darling ravens are flown. Forswear those freezing tricks of sight and all else I've taught against the flower in the blood, not wealth nor wisdom stands above the simple vein, the straight mouth. Go to your greenhorn youth before time ends and do good with your white hands. Now, I think, and here's the thing with Sylvia Plath. Sylvia Plath is great with titles. So when we go here, recantation. Recantation. What are we talking about when we talk about recantation? I have from Dictionary.com a definition here, recantation, a statement that one no longer holds a particular opinion or belief, a retraction. Every writer interprets Galileo's recantation in a different way. This is sort of a weird example from, from Dictionary.com, but recantation means that I have said something and I no longer believe it. I need to take it back. But it's very close to another word, another word which is much closer. I mean, what are we talking about here? We're talking about a witch. This is witchcraft that we're talking about here. And it's called, the poem itself is called recantation. But there is another type of cantation that is much more synonymous with the witch. Incantation. Incantations, a series of words said as a magic spell or charm, an incantation to raise the dead, etc. That is the example given by dictionary.com. An incantation is a series of words that is basically a spell. So, if we're talking about a witch who uses incantations, we are talking here about a poem called Recantation. We can imagine that what we are doing here, not just recantation as in I no longer mean what I had said, but I am trying to undo all of the magic that I had done. So let's look at what a witch is. Archetype of the witch. This is taken from Wikipedia. Uh, archetype, obviously we're talking about Jungian type terms. The witch archetype, deeply embedded in the collective unconscious, unconscious finds expression in myths, folklore, literature, and art across cultures. From ancient goddesses to contemporary representations, the witch's image evolves while retaining its core symbolism. The young witch Archetype is associated by Newman with the terrible mother, seduction, and the negative anima. The old witch is associated with psycho-spiritual death, mysteries, and the terrible mother. Isis, goddess of healing, magic, and mysteries, also has her dark side and embraces elements of both good and terrible mothers. Sophia, archetype or goddess of wisdom and an archetypal virgin, counterpart to motherhood is associated with the positive. 
In society, the fear and misunderstanding of the witch archetype can lead to the projection of these repressed aspects onto individuals who may be seen as different or unconventional. Very important to Sylvia Plath. Very important to Sylvia Plath, understanding Sylvia Plath. Oh, what am I doing here? <sighs> Come on. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Convention-a. Historical witch hunts and persecutions are stark examples of how collective anxieties around the archetype can be channeled into harmful actions. The vilification of those who exhibit traits associated with the witch, such as independence, wisdom, and the defiance of norms, can result in the suppression of individual freedoms and the perpetuation of social injustices. What we have, why is Sylvia Plath so hung up on the idea of witches? Why is Sylvia Plath so often writing from the standpoint of the witch? It is that unconventional nature. It is the misconceptualization of what a Sylvia Plath is. But so we have poetry from Sylvia Plath over her deepest and darkest thoughts of motherhood, right? And they are not very comforting. I'll just say it that way. Are these things related? Are these archetypes actually... So when you think about the witch, when we think about casting spells and all of that type of thing, incantations, all of those types of things, why would that necessarily be related to the negative mother archetype? We look at other forms of literature, Beowulf, Grindel, and Grindel's mother uh, does not seem to be, they're both monsters, does not seem to be a particularly bad monster mother, perhaps something paranormal about Grindel. Um, why would we associate the witch, then, with negative motherhood ideas. I think it has to do with the conventional, unconventional nature of things. The unconventional nature of what it means to be a witch is saying that societal norms do not apply to me. Societal norms do not apply to the witch. The witch rebels against these things. It is a societal norm that the woman is a mother. It is the societal norm that a man is a father. When the, These ideas go very, very deep into all of our, all of our cultural norms, values, expectations, beliefs, and even texts. When we look at the one of the most compelling questions to me about the religious texts, we say that Jesus did not have a wife, right? So this is Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code. Uh, this this is a very big point made in that book, though it's I don't think it's original to Dan Brown. I think this goes way, way back before Dan Brown. Um, we assume that Jesus, by today's standards, Jesus was not married because it is never mentioned that he was that he got married. So his so here's the thing. For a Jewish man at that time, as Jesus was, to not be married would have been mentionable, not that he was married. So if he had not been married, probably they would have said that in the Bible. Versus he having been married, which would have been assumed for a Jewish man around 30 years old. He would have been married. You would have only mentioned it if he wasn't married. And here is part of that double standard in society, right? Jesus, if we have him walking around as an unmarried man, performing magical feats, he must be of God. But if we have a woman walking around performing magical feats, she must be a witch. Sounds like a double standard to me, but what do I know? Um, 
but we have Sylvia Plath oftentimes adopting this role of the witch. And in this poem called Recantation as opposed to Incantation, we have this final phrase here. Before time ends and or go to your greenhorn youth before time ends and do good with your white hands. Now, I don't think that, that is a, a racial thing, your white hands, though obviously that interpretation is there to be made. I think that the white hands here is a reference to to not innocence, not virginity, but the idea of not being worked. This witch who is recanting has not done work work with her hands, has only performed magic and spells and all of these things. Uh, reading the tea leaves, etc. Uh, her crystal ball, uh, forcing the ravens to flock, all of these things. As opposed to that, we are ending this poem called Recantation by thrusting the witch, the woman, into the workplace. Sort of, um, sort of fitting for the time during which Sylvia Plath was living. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do on this channel, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button because literature is the only thing that I talk about on this channel. Dropping multiple videos a week. There's poetry every Monday. We are currently going short story by short story through Ernest Hemingway's Finca Vigia edition. So come along for that. If you enjoy short stories or Ernest Hemingway, we are also doing A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. We are also doing this Sylvia Plath read-along. There's a Stephen King read-along going along, going on right now. Uh, and as always, there will be more poems to be had as well. I hope to have you back for the next video.